How's it going guys? My name is Donovan. I'm not trying to be a cool guy with the glasses on, but where the sun is right now, it was hard for me to film this without hurting my eyes and squinting like crazy. Anyways, it's been quite a while since I've made a YouTube video. I have a goal for 2024 of putting stuff out like every two weeks, so like a bi-weekly upload schedule. I just want to make sure I'm putting out stuff that's, that's relevant, interesting, and that I'm passionate about making. I don't want to make content just to make content. I want it to be useful to you guys and, and fun to make. For those who are longtime subscribers, I really appreciate your continued support. For those who are new to the channel, my name's Donnie. Um, behind me is my 2016 Charger RT and my 2018 Hellcat Challenger uh, wide body. Both of these cars are modified. Um, this one is kind of the focal point of the channel. This car has a ton of things done to it. Cam, headers, E85, every other bolt-on you can think of pretty much. And today's video specifically is going to be about E85. So I converted this car to E85 back in October of 2020. been about three and a half ish years on E85 and this car does not have a flex fuel tune and it does not have a flex fuel sensor so at no point since October 2020 has this car had 91 or just any regular gasoline run through it it has been purely E85 since then and in order to convert back to 91 I'd have to completely retune the car so it's been only E85 for three and a half years and I want to give you guys my kind of long-term opinion on whether I think E85 is worth it. Maybe if, if you're trying to make that decision for yourself, this will help you out with some additional data points. We're going to take this thing for a drive. And number one, we're going to talk about what it took to convert this car to E85. And do I think it was worth it? this car to E85 when I first got it dyno tuned for the cam. Look at that car. Um, so when I first got it dyno tuned for the cam that was at full blown performance. They drained the 91 octane out of the tank, uh, filled it with E85 and um, I switched my fuel injectors to Hellcat injectors and that's pretty much it. Um, so it was tune injectors and then obviously making sure there was no uh, residual E80 or uh, 91 octane left in the tank. I had the stock fuel pump and there's no flex fuel module in this car. So in its current configuration, as I said previously, I can only run um, E85 in the car right now. I'd have to get it completely retuned to work for 91. If you had like a supercharger, or something that required more fueling than my setup does, you'd probably also have to change your, you'd have to go for larger fuel injectors than the Hellcat ones. And you'd probably also have to get a larger fuel pump or some sort of booster pump or something like that. Three, three and a half years in, I've had no problems with E85. Um, the tune, tuning was a little spotty at first, like getting the, getting the startup tune correct. Um, once full blown and ZH tunes got their hands on the car, um, it ran a lot better and I like don't have the surging issues that I used to have when I first put the cam in and also um, they got the E85 cold starts and warm starts pretty much worked out. I have little hiccups here and there but um, for the most part this car has been dead reliable and I've had no problems knock on wood. Would I still do an E85 conversion today if I was starting from scratch modifying this car and I had the current setup that I do. I know you guys are probably looking for like a yes or no answer. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. If this car was supercharged or it had a higher compression ratio, cars with higher compression ratios or cars that are boosted um, benefit more from E85 than this car does. And that's because those cars are more octane limited and E85 is closer to, it's, it's above 100 octane, 
right? In summary, this car is not high compression and it is not supercharged, so it doesn't benefit a ton from going to E85. If I have to estimate, like I probably picked up less than 15, maybe even less than 10 horsepower by going to E85. Some of you are trying to squeeze every horsepower they can out of the car, I get it, so you know that's worth it to you. I live in California where there are, uh, specifically in Southern California, where there are a lot of E85 stations. And so it's not too inconvenient for me to uh, find a station that's along some sort of route I'm going to. Um, when I first converted the car though, there were a lot fewer stations in my area. And it was really stressful sometimes because you almost felt like you had to plan out every route you were driving in case you were going to run out of gas, right? Um, whereas when you're on 91, there's a 91, there's a gas station with 91 octane on every corner. This problem is going to be really exacerbated in states where um, you guys don't have a lot of E85. Um, I know there are a lot of states where it's just not as widely offered as it is here in California. I don't know this for sure but I'm pretty sure it's subsidized here by the government so we just we have a lot more options for E85 and it's also cheaper here. Um, one thing you'll also want to keep in mind is E85 uh, you're not going to get the same gas mileage you do on regular gasoline. Um, to, to give you an estimate for how your gas mileage is going to change take your current gas mileage on 91 or 87 or whatever your car has multiply it by 0.66 so take two-thirds of your current gas mileage and that's an estimate for what you'll get on e85 um, so although e85 is cheaper um, it's kind of offset by the fact that it burns faster keep that in mind this is a long way of me saying that um, I, I'm older now, I like to drive these cars around more. They're not new cars anymore, so I wanna take them on road trips and, and things like that. Would I convert this car to E85 if I wasn't racing it every day and I wanted to have the flexibility of being able to drive wherever I wanted and it was my daily driver and I wanted to drive it to Arizona every month or something? Probably not. Um, I, I don't know that I'd make the same decision to, to convert over again. This is no longer my daily driver, so it doesn't really bother me too much anymore. But I know that's not the case for, for many. Um, the car, you know, their their charger, they it's a fairly practical car, so they like to drive it around and, and daily it. So um, at this point in my life, if I was starting from scratch, I don't know if the 10 or 15 horsepower would really be worth it to me um, to do the E85 conversion. So long story short, you have to assess, if you want to do E85 in your Charger or Challenger RT, you have to assess whether or not you think the inconvenience is worth the relatively small gain in power that you'll get from that transition. If you race the car all the time and you're in an area where E85 is readily available, then sure. If you live in an area like another state that isn't California where you don't have as um, convenient access to the fuel and you drive the car every day, you may really want to reassess whether that's the route you want to take with the car. Ultimately, I can't make the decision for you. I can only give you uh, my opinion and um, the, the facts about what I've experienced with the car. With that being said, that's gonna be the end of today's video. I hope you found this somewhat informative. Let me know what you think of the E85 conversion. If you've done it already to your car, if you haven't done it, tell me why or why not in the comments. And if you're still on the fence, please feel free to leave your questions in the comments. I try to reply to as many people as possible. And if I don't get to them, sometimes somebody else in the community gets to them and we get a little bit of a discussion going in the comments, which is very useful for all of us and people who are looking to do this in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Remember to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you next time. Peace out.